Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this first Ask the Vet Facebook Live hosted by Spay Neuter Network. I'm the vet, Dr. Bowden, and I would like to talk about animal and uh, animal vaccines today. I'd love to hear any questions you have about vaccines or other animal related topics, veterinary related topics. Um, so post them in the chat <laughs> during the Facebook Live and hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you. Um, just a few announcements from Spay Neuter Network. Um, North Texas Giving Day is happening now, so please consider giving to Spay Neuter Network. Um, and also their clinics are in need of canned cat food, so if you can check out their Amazon wish list, um, that would be really helpful. Also, if you do shop at Amazon, go to smile.amazon.com um, and choose Spay Neuter Network as your charity of choice, and they'll get a portion of the uh, of the of your purchase. Um, from Amazon. So I want to start by saying this Facebook Live by Spay Neuter Network and those employed and contracted by them is for informational purposes only. This post does not constitute a veterinary client patient relationship and does not provide diagnosis or treatment of your pet. Always consult your pet's veterinarian for questions or concerns about your pet's medical needs. And the inform this information is intended to support you, but you are ultimately responsible for your pet's health and safety. So with that said, I want to talk about the importance of vaccinating your pet. Again, if you have any questions that come up, please feel free to post them in the chat. Also like this video um, and share it with your friends if you found it helpful. Um, so vaccines are very important at preventing deadly and contagious diseases in our pets. The rabies vaccine is required by state law for dogs and cats. Rabies is a deadly disease that can spread to humans, so it's very important that we vaccinate our animals against rabies as they have the potential to interact with wildlife or other animals who may have rabies and then in turn interact with us. So first I'm going to discuss the most common dog vaccines and then we'll turn to our feline friends. Uh, the most common dog vaccines are rabies, bordetella, leptospirosis, and DHPP, which DHPP stands for distemper adenovirus parvovirus and parainfluenza. And I know that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of viruses. Um, and sometimes the DHPP vaccine can be in combination with the leptospirosis vaccine as well. And so I'm going to cover a few of those diseases so you guys know what are we even protecting against. Um, so you may have heard that there's been an outbreak of distemper in Dallas. Uh, and if you've ever owned puppies, you've likely heard of parvovirus. Um, so parvovirus is a virus that infects the GI tract of our dogs, primarily in immunocompromised animals such as puppies, especially those that are unvaccinated, unvaccinated against this disease. Parvo causes vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, and all of these things can lead to death. Now distemper virus can cause these GI signs as well, um, in addition to respiratory issues, so like nasal discharge, coughing, um, and it may eventually lead to neurological signs that can be lifelong if it doesn't lead to death as well. And so both of these diseases are very contagious. Um, they spread rapidly and treatment is so costly. And so even with treatment, many pets don't make it through these diseases. So fortunately, the vaccine is highly effective and it's a lot less expensive than going through treatment. So for, for cats, the main vaccines are against rabies, feline leukemia, and FVRCP. <coughs> Excuse me. FVRCP protects against rhinotracheitis, which is also known as feline herpes virus, Khaleesi virus, and panleukopenia. And so with panleukopenia, um, it's the parvovirus in cats, and it has a lot of the same GI signs that we see in our dogs. Uh, and so herpes, Khaleesi virus, and panleukopenia are also all extremely contagious among cats. And so with herpes, we'll see the respiratory and eye issues. Um, and then once a cat has herpes virus, it will remain in their system for the rest of their life, occasionally causing signs when they're stressed. Um, the signs are usually pretty mild as long as they're not immunocompromised as well, but um, many cats end up having herpes virus. <laughs> so in general, these vaccines are recommended once a year. However, depending on your dog or cat's lifestyle, your own veterinarian can provide the best guidance on how often your pets in your home require vaccination and what other vaccines may be beneficial to them. So you may be wondering, 
where can I get my pet vaccinated? Most veterinary clinics offer these vaccines. The exception would be like emergency clinics. They don't generally um, offer these because they're tending to emergencies presented to them at that time. Um, Spay Neuter Network offers these vaccines and you can go to spayneuternetwork.org um, for a list of locations and what days and times um, those are all offered. So after this brief flyover of how vaccines work. Um, I'm going to check in on the comments and see. And thanks to all of you that sent in questions ahead of time. Um, I don't see any questions in the comments right now, but um, if you do have any questions, feel free to post them there um, or any comments. Um, that would be great. And so um, let me get over to our questions that we got first. So um, this is a really great question. And actually the, the next two questions go together. So um, the first one is, my dog stays in our yard, so does he really need these vaccines? And then the second one is, how important is the FVRCP vaccine if my cats never go outside? Is it something that they really need? And so if a dog stays in your yard, they still do need to be vaccinated. Um, and if a cat stays in your house, they still need to be vaccinated as well. So rabies is by law, they both have to receive that once a year or every three years, depending on your vet clinic. Um, and so if your dog's in your yard, there's still a likelihood that they could get out um, of your yard and could interact with other animals if they're picked up by the shelter. You wanna make sure they have a good foundation of vaccinations. Um, it, even if, you know, you're, you think they never leave your yard. Um, also, just being in the yard, other dogs can come up to the fence and interact with them. And you don't know what those other dogs have. And so it is really important to vaccinate them against DHPP and rabies. Um, and then again, any other lifestyle vaccines that your veterinarian deems important. Um, and then with the cat staying inside, it seems less likely they're not going to interact with cats, you know, through your house. But <laughs> um, if you end up going to somebody else's house and they have an indoor outdoor cat that is carrying disease, you can take that disease home to your cat. It's called being a fomite and like the, the disease can be on you. Um, and transfer to your cat. So again, it's really important because these diseases are so contagious and being in the middle of a pandemic, hopefully towards the end, but um, we've seen how contagious a disease can be. And so um, in the same way, these are really contagious too. And so it's really important that, um, that they get these vaccines. And then the next question is, what are the side effects um, of vaccination against FVRCP and parvovirus. Um, and so, so there are, there can be side effects. Um, it depends on your pet. Um, if they've had vaccine reactions before, then I do recommend pre-medicating them uh, with Benadryl at the direction of your veterinarian, either um, at the clinic or at home. Um, but what that would look like if they had a vaccine reaction is they could get really itchy, red, um, they could start vomiting. And so just watching soon after they get vaccines, if they're having any of these signs, report them to your veterinarian um, or to the clinic that you went to, let them know so they can make a note in your pet's record and remember that for future visits. Um, generally though, these vaccines are really safe. I've given tons of vaccines before and and not seen a lot of side effects and once we do see a side effect again we we try to mitigate that by doing um pre-medication first and so the next question is when can the fvrcp vaccine be given um generally i recommend starting at six weeks old um in the shelter we might start sooner but um we wanna start these vaccines young in these puppies and kittens. Um, so that goes for the Parvo vaccine as well. Uh, and then rabies starts at 12 weeks old. And so uh, if you start at six weeks old, then you give them vaccines every three to four weeks until they're 20 weeks old. And so I know that's a lot of information, um, but 
the clinic you go to should be able to provide uh, your next vaccination date if you just ask them or if they don't already give it to you. Um, and then we have, uh, what should I do if my pet is several months overdue for vaccines? That's a great question too. You can go ahead and make an appointment or, you know, with Spain and your network, you can drop in. Um, it's a walk-in clinic for the vaccines. Uh, you can go and get them their shots. Um, they'll still get a booster of immunity from that overdue shot. And so um, while we don't recommend getting them overdue, um, just to keep up their immunity, you can still get them their vaccines. Um, and then my dog is pregnant. <laughs> can she be vaccinated? Um, so I don't recommend pregnant dogs uh, be vaccinated against DHPP um, while they're pregnant, but they can get rabies. Um, and again, if they were in the shelter, we'd probably do their DHPP just because the diseases are very contagious, but um, generally we just recommend rabies. Okay, and then I'm gonna check the comments again. Oh, thanks, Melissa. <laughs> um, I appreciate, she said, nice overview. And then uh, Dane asked if we can listen at a later time and we'd love for you to listen at a later time, uh, just whenever you get the chance and let us know what you think. Um, okay, and then another question we got ahead of time is, my cat came from a rescue a month ago and I don't know if they vaccinated him. Will it hurt him if I get him vaccinated and he's already had his shots? Um, no, it won't hurt him. I think uh, plenty of animals get vaccines sooner than they need to. Um, and like the overdue shot, you know, sometimes we just don't know their history. And so it's okay to get them vaccinated again. But if you really want to know, just to make sure, you could reach out to your rescue and see if they were able to vaccinate him or if, um, or if they know if somebody vaccinated before they got him, um, if they have the records for that. Hopefully they gave you some records, but um, if they didn't, just I would reach out to them and see if they respond. But if they don't, I'd, I'd get him vaccinated again just so you can have his records too. Um, okay, so we're going over to the comments again. I think that was all the questions we received ahead of time. And thanks again for sending those in. Um, okay, so we don't have any other comments or questions right now. Um, I'll give people a few more minutes or a minute more maybe <laughs> to type in anything that they want to ask. Um, just a little more about me. I'm a veterinarian at a local animal shelter, um, and I have been practicing for six or seven years now, um, and um, I've done a lot related to vaccinations. <laughs> um, I, one place I worked, that's all I did was um, vaccines day in and day out. And so um, I think the biggest turnout we ever had was like 400 pets. <laughs> and so it was a really big, um, but I'm really thankful to groups like Spay Neuter Network that provides vaccinations and spaying and neutering for our community. Um, it helps a lot more animals get the care that they need um, and hopefully reduce the population and diseases that we see. Um, and so, like I said, with there being a distemper outbreak in Dallas right now, if your dog were to get out and like interact with other dogs, they could get distemper. Um, and it's just much less likely to happen if they get their vaccines ahead of time. Um, and so if your dog's never been vaccinated and maybe they're not a puppy, um, same with cats, maybe they're not a kitten, I'd still recommend going in and getting them vaccinated. And then three to four weeks later, getting those vaccines boosted. Uh, Usually you only need the DHPP and the leptospirosis boosted, um, and then with cats, the FVRCP and the feline leukemia vaccine. So, well, it looks like we don't have any more questions, <laughs> but um, we plan to do this monthly, the Ask the Vet. So, um, you know, be looking out for that on Spay Neuter Network's page. 
uh, and we'll ask again if people have questions ahead of time and hopefully we can address those for you. Um, but I'm going to end our video for now. And again, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. Um, and yeah, good night. <laughs>